for a free and democratic and more advanced society. You know, we all depend on each other. We could be independent if we wanted to, but at the same time, we could depend on each other. We would produce everything that we ever needed. You know, food or comfort, anything that we ever needed, we would have the power to make it ourselves. We wouldn't live in a society where we have to have all this type of money to have the same kind of comfort that a rich billionaire was going to have or some people living in extreme poverty or some people there, you know, that's basically how it would be. Essentially, there'd be no waste either, would there? Because you'd be sustaining uh, just enough, basically, uh, to sustain, like you said, to live off of. So there's no, there would be no excess? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, like, um, perhaps if the person wanted a little extra, yeah, they can do whatever they want because in a communist society, everyone would be a member of the working class. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean that everyone would be poor like the working class? No. The reason the working class are poor is because they're being exploited by the capitalists that are in power and they're not being given the amount of money that they truly deserve because of all the work that they're doing. So if every single person in this country was working class and everyone did the exact same amount of work pulling all their weight together instead of having the working class doing all the work, the middle class doing some of the work, not calling them lazy, but they're not doing as much work as the workers are doing. And then the upper class, you know, only working for themselves to get rich. Um, the rich, you know, just working to expand their little empires. That's not really creating a healthy or productive society whatsoever. If every single person was a member of the working class, that would mean that they would have the knowledge and the skills to, co to control their own lives, to create whatever they wanted, and to create whatever the entire human race wanted as a whole. And what you would see is that they would actually become more wealthy, and not just like um, in material values, but even just wealthy spiritually in their personality or whatever. There wouldn't be the same kind of worries or the pressures that we're facing now. I mean, yesterday... I read an article by the Associated Press called, um, what was it, an unhappy birthday or something for Americans um, because of the 4th of July, mm -hmm. where they did this little um, poll or research everyone in this little small town mm -hmm. in Massachusetts, I think, or Connecticut, I'm not sure, and everybody there was suffering, even the most optimistic people. And the worst one was with this one person who said, you know, everything's so hard, the bills, the money, whatever. And the most shocking part of that is that that was a 16-year-old boy or girl that they interviewed. Mm -hmm. So if a 16-year-old is suffering like that, I mean, that's basically the future for anybody under capitalism. It's all the pressures, it's all this, it's all that. Even when we have an economy that is somewhat good that benefits the middle class, those pressures are still going to be there, just not as bad as it is under a conservative government, but they're always going to be there because that's a price to pay for capitalism. So, um, you know, I mean... Well, the economy it, in the United States doesn't seem that strong to me right now. Does it, it doesn't seem that way to you either, does it? And I think that's why that article was written, The Unhappy Birthday, um, because if a 16-year-old is feeling the effects of our economy, then it must not be that strong. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much feeling that way for everybody. Entire families are being crammed. I mean, all over where I live, I've seen, I've seen people that they were middle class just a few years ago, and now they've actually become working class like I am right now. And, you know, just suffering, having to get food stamps just to make ends meet and everything, and that's just insane. I mean, that's not helping anybody whatsoever. That's just insanity. Well, you and I uh, have emailed back and forth, and we both seem to think that this government might be uh, pushing towards a fascist state and uh, a satanic state. And we often fight that. I see you commenting that on YouTube a lot. Why do you think this country could be moving towards that? And what do you think should be done to stop it? Because as you know, I exposed, or I, I exposed organized stalking. And that has a lot to do with the rise of a fascist state. Uh, you know, Hitler did that before he uh, rose to power. There was a lot of organized stalking in uh, 
Nazi Germany. And many yeah. people, I'm getting many, many phone calls all over, not only the United States, but all over the world. So what do you think about that coming in? Well, I mean, first of all, you would, um, you'd have to historically, hold on a second. You'd have to historically look at what the origin of fascism is. There was even an article written by Leon Trotsky about it in, when fascism first started popping out. Fascism basically is a mix of extreme nationalism, militarism, um, extreme versions of capitalism, corporate capitalism, that is a very important to point out, is the role of the corporations in a fascist state. And they use, um, how would I put this? Not all of them use revolutionary sounding rhetoric like uh, freedom fighters or anything like that. Some of them do. Hitler used a lot of rhetoric like that, but then you have others that they don't sound that radical, but they sound like they care about the people and they're trying to protect everyone, but it's actually the complete opposite. Now, Mussolini was the one who invented fascism. Fascism didn't exist prior to Mussolini inventing it, and what he said, it's a very famous quote, was that the marriage of corporations and government is fascism. And what do you see going around in this country? I mean, pretty soon this entire nation is going to be run by one big corporation. I mean, it's already, it, it already is that way if you look at it. Fox News is a corporation, and the U.S. government allows them to merge with them and everything. I mean, I, I think even Bush, a few years ago, he even made one of the Fox News correspondents his White House um, spokesperson mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, right now the government is leaning towards a corporatist state, and a corporatist state is a government that's close to fascism, but not there yet. It's a corporate-controlled government. I mean, all capitalist governments have always been corporate-controlled, but indirectly. But it's come to a point where there's pretty much not going to be a difference between a corporation and the government. It's going to be the same thing. You talk to a corporation, you're talking to the government at the same time. And we already seen the effects of that in Mexico because Mexico is a corporate state. And that's what's happening in this country uh, right now. And after a corporate state, eventually it becomes fascism. And we can already see that. I mean, if you've read that uh, book called The 14 Points of Fascism, it actually makes a list of, of uh, signs or telltale warning signs or something that shows you how a fascist state arises or the methods that they use. And it actually looks a lot like how Hitler um, came to power, but then when you compare those warning signs to what's happening in the U.S. government today, I mean, almost all of them have been fulfilled already. Can you give us some of the points? So our listeners well, know, because not everyone knows every, uh, every aspect of fascism. Well, I mean, I don't have all the points by list, but the ones that pointed out... Um, that you see the today in, in our government, yeah. you know, in our United States. Was the fanatical extremism of this sort of fanatical patriotism where you can't criticize the government because if not, it's synonymous with being a terrorist. I mean, a few years ago, Homeland Security showed up on the doorstep of, um, of a young college boy because he was reading a book uh, by Mao Zedong in China. By the way, Mao was a Stalinist, so I don't uh, like him or, you know, I, I will never make up excuses for him because he was a brutal uh, murderer and tyrant, but they went up to this boy's house and they accused him of reading a terrorist book. And all right, Mao's little red book does encourage terrorism and everything to overthrow a government, but let's be serious. There is a book that is a million times worse than that, which the neo-Nazis use as like their Bible. It's called the Turner Diaries. That's what inspired Timothy McVeigh, the neo-Nazi terrorist, to blow up all of those places in Oklahoma City. And they haven't banned that book or put it on a list of any terrorist reading or anything like that. So what exactly are they trying to say? Are they trying to say that... Um, terrorism that's Asian or from another country is not acceptable, but then you have 
these people who are preaching genocide and mass murder and they have already committed terrorism in this country and they get away with it.